It's more fun to love it. It's more fun to learn. A perfect day of learning grade 9. It's me, your teacher Vincent. Join me again in today's lesson and I'm sure that we will have fun discovering the beauty of arts. Last time, we talked about the elements and principles of arts during Renaissance and Baroque period. We also got to know the different artists in each period and their artworks. Today, we continue learning and exploring the arts of Renaissance and Baroque period, specifically the artworks, tradition, characteristics of arts, and media techniques of this period will be tackled. In addition, we will be acquainted with the influences of the Renaissance and Baroque periods on the Philippine art. Are you ready? If yes, then let us get started. In continuation of our lesson in art, our first topic is the artworks tradition, characteristics art media technique of Renaissance and Baroque period. The elements and principles of art and design are a foundation of the language we use to talk about art. The artist decides what principles of art he or she wants to use in a painting. While an artist might not use all the principles of design in one piece, the principles are intertwined and the use of one will often depend on another. It is generally agreed that a successful painting is unified while also having some variety created by the areas of contrast and emphasis, is visually balanced, and moves the viewer's eye around the composition. Thus, the principle of art can influence the effect and impact of another. To start our lesson, let's study the seven principles of art. According to Marder, these are the visual tools that the artist uses to create a composition. These principles also represent how the artist uses the elements of art to create an effect and help convey the artist's intent. As you watch and listen, take note of the different principles because this will help you to easily understand and describe any artwork. First is balance. This refers to the visual weight of the elements of the composition. It is a sense that the painting feels stable and feels right. Balance can be achieved in three different ways. First is through symmetry, in which both sides of the composition have the same elements in the same position as in mirror image or the two sides of a face. Next, we also have asymmetry. The composition is balanced due to the contrast of any of the elements of art. The third one is the radial symmetry, in which elements are equally spaced around a central point, as in the spokes coming out from the hub of a bicycle tire. Next is contrast. It is the difference between elements of art in a composition such that each element is made stronger in relation to the other. When placed next to each other, contrasting elements command the viewer's attention. We also have emphasis. Emphasis is when the artist creates an area of the composition that is visually dominant and commands the viewer's attention. This is often achieved by contrast. Moreover, movements is the result of using the elements of art such that they move the viewer's eye around within the image. 
A sense of movement can be created by diagonal or curvy lines, either real or implied, by edges, by the illusion of space, by repetition, and by energetic mark marking. Also, we have pattern. It is the uniform repetition of any of the elements of art or any combination thereof. Anything can be turned into a pattern through repetition. Some classic patterns are spirals, grids, and weaves. Let us not forget about rhythm. Rhythm is created by movement implied through the repetition of elements of art in a non-uniform but organized way. It is related to rhythm in music. Lastly, unity and variety. Unity and variety must be applied. You want your painting to feel unified such that all the elements fit together comfortably, but too much unity creates monotony and too much variety create chaos. So, you need both. Now that you know the seven principles of art, let us discuss the characteristics of the Renaissance art. Renaissance art portrays the enthusiasm of the classical Greek and Roman idea of creativity and openness for new ways of human thinking. There are seven major characteristics of Renaissance art. First, the Renaissance was a resurrection of the human ideals. Renaissance art depict individual characteristics with genuine aspects and compose their actual physical appearances. Second, the Renaissance brought the resurrection of naturalism. Artists focused on the human body's anatomy. They studied and understood how human muscles lay underneath the skin. Third, Renaissance artists added their originality in their craft. Artists learn to specialize in their works by adding wisdom to their art by including small details. This helped them create unique original works of art. Fourth, Renaissance craftsmen depicted non-religious topics. Craftsmen started painting scenes that were not religious. Fifth, Renaissance art was exclusive. The financial accent of various Italian families began appointing craftsmanship for private partnership. A trademark that often practiced by a painter oftentimes meant including individuals from the benefactor's family directly into a biblical scene of the painting commissioned. Sixth, Renaissance paintings ventured into Greek and Roman culture. There was an expanded enthusiasm for prehistoric studies to rediscover classical Greek and Roman culture. And the last one, Renaissance artists became specialists at their crafts. Renaissance artists used their skills to further grow in popularity. The two famous Renaissance artists were Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. I hope you have taken notes of the different characteristics of Renaissance art. And now, let's move on to the characteristics of Baroque art. Baroque is well known for its extravagance and over-the-top style, and it is still a familiar sight in many European cathedrals and palaces. Here are Baroque art characteristics. It is known to have intense sense of drama using contrast, detail, and movement in order to create a sense of awe in the viewer. 
Also, painting often tells a story or gives a message. Aside from that, it traditionally depicts religious or classical scenes. The use of rich, deep colors often contrasting the three primaries in close proximity to each other created a sense of obviousness and drama. Finally, there is a presence of light subjects against dark backgrounds to create movement and to make the viewer see the intended story. In the Philippines, there is a massive influence of Western countries which can be seen in our painting, dances, weaving, sculpting, and pottery. It was introduced by the Spanish and Portuguese in the 16th century. Let us try to examine Philippine structures influenced by the Renaissance and Baroque style. Intramuros, Manila Intramuros, urban district and historic walled city within metropolitan Manila in the Philippines. The name from the Spanish word meaning within walls refers to the fortified city founded at the mouth of the Pasig River shortly after 1571 by the Spanish conquistador Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. San Agustin Church, Manila It was the only building left intact after the destruction of Intramuros in World War II. Built between 1587 and 1606, it is the oldest church in the Philippines. The massive facade conceals an ornate interior filled with objects of great historical and cultural merit. San Agustin Church of Pauay, Ilocos Norte The Pauay Church, also known as San Agustin Church, is a historical church located in the town of Pauay, Ilocos Norte, Philippines. Construction of the Pauay Church was started by the Augustinian Friars in 1694. It was completed in 1894 led by Father Antonio Estavillo and was rededicated in 1894. A three-story coral stone bell tower stands to the right of the church which served as an observation post in 1896 for the Katipuneros during the Philippine Revolution against the Spaniards and again by the Filipino guerrillas during the Japanese occupation in the World War II. It was inscribed as UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the best examples of the Baroque churches in the Philippines. Santo Tomas de Villanueva Church, Miagao Iloilo Miagao Church, also known as the Church of the Santo Tomas de Villanueva in the town of Miagao Iloilo, is an Augustinian built Baroque church and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Built between 1787 to 1797, its fortress-like design suggests its dual purpose 
as a place of worship and as a fort used in defending the town against Moro riders. The church was declared as UNESCO World Heritage Site on December 11, 1993. Santa Maria Church in Santa Maria Ilocosur The Santa Maria Church, also called the Church of the Lady of Assumption or Church of Nuestra Señora de la Asuncion, is a parish church located in Ilocosur, province of the Philippines. Standing tall on top of a hill, it is one of the four Baroque churches of the Philippines that is inscribed as UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Santa Maria Church is a complex art of clay bricks and mortar. The Baclayon Church of Bohol The Baclayon Church, just 6 kilometers away from Tagbilaran City, Bohol, is the second oldest stone church in the Philippines. Constructed in 1595 by the Jesuit priest, it is still intact and houses important relics and images reminiscent the historic Roman Catholic religion in the country. Among those displayed in the church museum are crystal chandelier, silver tabernacle, altar with carvings inlaid with gold, and life-size statues and more. UNESCO says that these churches established a style of building and design that was adapted to the physical conditions in the Philippines and had an important influence on the later church architecture in the region. UNESCO says that these churches established a style of building and design that was adapted to the physical conditions of the Philippines and had an important influence in the later church architecture in the region. Let's have a recap of what we have learned today. 7 Principles of Art Balance this refers to the visual weight of the elements of the composition. Balance can be achieved in three different ways. We have symmetry, asymmetry, and radial symmetry. Symmetry in which both sides of a composition have the same elements in the same position as in a mirror image or the two sides of a face. Asymmetry, the composition is balanced due to the contrast of any of the elements of art. Radial symmetry, in which elements are equally spaced around a central point as in a spokes coming out of the hub of a bicycle tire. Contrast, it is the difference between elements of art in a composition such that each element is made stronger in relation to the other. Emphasis, Emphasis is when the artist creates an area of the composition that is visually dominant and commands the viewer's attention. Movement The result of using elements of art such that they move the viewer's eye around and within the image. Pattern It is the uniform repetition of any of the elements of art or any combination thereof. Some classical patterns are spirals, grids, and weaves. Rhythm Rhythm is created by movement implied through the repetition of elements of an art a non-uniform but organized way. 7 Major Characteristics of Renaissance Art Renaissance was a resurrection of human ideals. It is brought by the resurrection of naturalism. Artists added their originality in their craft. Craftsmen depicted non-religious topics. Renaissance art was exclusive. Paintings ventured into Greek and Roman culture. And Renaissance artists 
became specialists at their crafts. Characteristics of Baroque Art It is known to have intense sense of drama using contrast, detail, and movement in order to create a sense of awe in the viewer. Paintings often tell a story or gives message. Baroque art used of rich, deep colors, often contrasting the three primaries in close proximity to each other, created a sense of obviousness and drama. Philippine structures influenced by the Renaissance and Baroque style. We have Intramuros, Manila, San Agustin Church, Manila, San Agustin Church, Paway, Ilocos Norte, Santo Tomas de Villanueva Church, Miagao, Iloilo, the Santa Maria Church in Santa Maria, Ilocosur, and the Bacleon Church of Bohol. That's all my dear students. I hope you enjoyed our class. See you next time. Again, this is Teacher Vincent. Have a wonderful day.